Welcome and welcome back to this channel. This is Jay from Alyssa and Jay. Today I am excited to share some of my opinions about several different cameras and lenses that we had the opportunity to play with during the Zoom Camera Fair in Thailand. This fair happens every six months, once in March and again in October of every year. So if you're someone like me who likes to play with the latest and greatest cameras and lenses, and if you're staying in Thailand, you can consider visiting there. Since I have a lot to talk about, I split this entire experience into multiple videos. This video is just one part of the series of videos yet to come or already available in the playlist. You can check out this playlist called Zoom Camera Fair March 2024 in this channel. Now let's get to the content. I make this video as a response to someone's comment in one of my previous videos asking me to compare the Fujifilm XS20 versus the Sony A6700. Mind you, this is not a spec-wise comparison. Rather, it is a comparison from a long-time Sony A6700 user's point of view. If you need to know the spec comparison, I will put the links for the specs of each cameras discussed in the video in the description below. Also, I will mention the spec of the cameras when I compare them as well. I am basing this video mainly on the build quality, photos and videos. I want the viewers to understand if you need a 6K video recording device, the Fujifilm XS20 is the only camera that can do it at its price point. So let's talk about the rest. Let me take a moment to tell you, Alyssa and I, we love to travel and we bring the beauty around the world to you in the form of travel vlogs. If you're interested in traveling and would like to know more about travel gears and itineraries, you should check out our playlist of countries and reviews. It will help you to understand your destination and what to carry during those trips. This is all free and you can show us your support by watching those videos. Let's jump right into the video. The reasons to choose the Sony A6700 over the Fujifilm XS20 are better autofocus in photos and videos, 4K 120 frames per second S-Log3 video recording option, faster on-to-shoot time or startup time, lighter native lenses, huge third-party lens support, and upgradability to full-frame cameras in the future. The reasons to choose the Fujifilm XS20 over the Sony A6700 are the film simulation, 6K up to 30 frames per second in 10-bit internal recording option, 6K up to 30 frames per second in 12-bit external RAW recording or ProRes RAW recording option, better monitor resolution, joystick, 16-bit RAW photo capture, and higher shutter speed shooting option in electronic shutter mode up to 1 32,000th of a second. On paper, it sounds like the Fujifilm XS20 is a clear winner in most aspects and is even cheaper than the Sony A6700. So let me know in the comments which one you're going to pick up and why. I'm going to stick with the Sony A6700 as I think it is the camera with the least compromise. I mentioned the reasons why I think that way in a separate video. I recommend you to check that out in the video card above or clicking the link below in the description. Build quality and handling. The Fujifilm XS20 is built like a traditional DSLR style camera, while the Sony A6700 is built like a rangefinder style camera with a viewfinder on the side. Regarding the viewfinder, Sony A6700's EVF has a lower magnification than the Fujifilm XS20's EVF, which means the Fuji XS20's EVF will feel more immersive. The Fujifilm XS20 has a brighter and sharper display with more resolution in comparison with the Sony A6700. The dials feel more satisfying to turn with the Fuji XS20. The grooves on the dials are deeper, providing deeper grip on the dials on the Fuji XS20. A few more things I like about Fuji XS20 that I wish my Sony A6700 had are a dedicated ISO button, flash, and a joystick. They're really useful in many situations. But when it comes to handling, I like the Sony A6700 more as it sits well in my giant hands. Photo shooting and image quality. The images are excellent in both the cameras. I shoot RAW plus JPEG mode in every camera that I own. Mostly I like to edit the RAW photos before delivering them to the family and friends or clients. So the Fuji colors and film simulation have become unnecessary for me. If you like to fiddle with the color simulations in the Fujifilm cameras, they are still great. I like the classic chrome and I used to use it most of the time with my Fujifilm X-T4. But for me, Sony will nail the autofocus most of the time, ending up with sharper images as desired. 
On the flip side, the Fujifilm X-S20 offers 16-bit color depth in photos, which means that you have more flexibility in editing the colors of the raw photos. And on the colors on JPEG images from the Fujifilm X-S20 will look richer. When it comes to videos, the Fujifilm X-S20 wins in the resolution, while the Sony wins with the frame rate. You can choose which one is important for you. Sony A6700 shoots 4K 120 frames per second with 1.6x crop. So if you shoot wildlife far away, and if you still need more reach, this will be really helpful. This is exactly what I do and so the winner for me is Sony. When it comes to overheating, both these cameras will overheat while recording in the highest settings possible. But if you were conservative in your recording, you can record without overheating either of them. For the verdict, I like both the cameras and you will not go wrong buying either of them. I hope I made my case clear and hope you choose the right product that suits your needs. Thank you for watching the video and have a nice day. Please consider subscribing to this channel and watch more videos. If you enjoy our content, whether it's travel vlogs or gear reviews and would like to have access to our exclusive content, please support us on Patreon using the link in the description below.